Good evening, campers, and welcome aboard the Starship Nightwish. I'm Commander Exorcist, and it has been a while. I was out last week because I was actually out of town and not able to do one of these videos, so I missed a lot. I missed Update 17 and the Spires, and so it figures that the time I'm gone that there actually be some amazing things happening in Elite Dangerous. But hey, you know what? There's also some really interesting stuff happening right now in Elite and so that's what we're here to talk about because this is Talk O Tuesday. This is my weekly Elite Dangerous show where I pick a Galnet article and read it. Not because you're not capable of reading it, but just because I like to and it's, you know, easy content. Um, and I talk about it a little bit. Talk a little bit about what's happening in the greater Elite Dangerous galaxy, typically from a lore standpoint. Point, but if I feel the need, you know, I may break and break the fourth wall and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the game and stuff. So anyway, it is Taco Tuesday, and welcome everyone. Like I said, I was gone last week, so I missed a lot. There's a lot to talk about, um, but we're going to talk specifically tonight about the humans that have been rescued from the Titans. That's right. Um, while you guys are hopping around the spires and um, taking selfies from the top of these Thargoid death machines, and, and Alec Turner's building a racetrack around them, and um, ARF is eating the script to Frameshift Live, and all kinds of weird stuff is happening right now in the Elite Dangerous community. The people who were rescued from the Titans, remember the um, repurposed limpets that came out a while back? Yeah, those have been used, and they've worked. And oddly enough, that whole fiasco with going to the Titans and mining humans off of them, yeah, that didn't last very long. That was kind of an activity that probably lasted about 48 hours before I think everyone kind of got their fill of it. Um, it's a high, high, high level, end game level stuff. It really is. I mean, even for somebody like me who has played Elite Dangerous for about six years straight at this point, um, I would have trouble getting a ship capable of doing the things that are kind of needed to be done at the and the Titans and the Maelstroms at this point. But there are plenty of people that have been doing that. And it's because of them that we have thousands of people that have been rescued from captivity and they are being kept under strict quarantine protocols. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with the humans that have been rescued from the Thargoids and kind of the military response to uh, these um, these captives and their return. Um, I Like I said, and, and with these articles. I don't read these articles. I may skim them a little bit. Obviously, it's hard not to see what the text says when I'm pasting it into my my uh, display program here. Um, but we're experiencing this together for the first time. So let's get to it and talk about the Titan survivors kept in quarantine. Thousands of people rescued from captivity within the Thargoid motherships remain isolated under strict medical and security protocols. Before we go on to Professor Alba, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is a fantastic thing. Um, you know, it's 3309, okay? This isn't, to, this isn't 2023 or 1985 or, you know, any of the years where we probably would have released these people into the wild because we want them to reintegrate as fast as possible. No, we actually, in, the, in 3309, we know that it's possible that these people have some kind of issue going on, and we don't want them to spread their Thargoid mind control germs. I don't have a tinfoil cowboy hat, or I sure as hell would have one on right now, but we do not want them to spread their Thargoid-influenced minds throughout the galaxy at the moment, because we don't know what's happened to these people. And so I got to commend... Aegis and a lot of the other organizations out there that are that are keeping things quarantined, keeping things locked down, at least for the moment. This is I hope this isn't forever. Obviously, the title of this video is Quarantine for Life. I hope not. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that because I have some um, thoughts that may surprise you about that. Uh, Professor Alba Tessero, head of Aegis, spoke at a press conference. I'm relieved to see that the subsurface extraction missiles are proving effective, especially considering how quickly uh, they went into production. Yeah, me too. They went into production very quickly. You know, it's really weird how we went for 
years and years without any really significant changes to our anti-Thargoid weaponry, and then all of a sudden, boom, Aegis and Azimuth and all the other A's are all on it. It's just weird, isn't it? Many pilots are using them to uh, excavate bio-storage capsules from beneath the hulls of Thargoid Titans. Yeah, we've seen some of that. And some of them are taking them down to settlements and dropping them. We did learn, if, um, it was on uh, Witch Space News recently, about how we did learn that collecting these things um, changes, it has a severe impact, a positive impact, on uh, the Thargoid control state of certain systems. So not only is there a monetary benefit to rescuing human pilots, but there and a moral benefit to it, by the way, um, there's actually a strategic benefit to them because bringing these pods into the system apparently has some kind of, of effect on the Thargoid influence in the whole system. So that was kind of neat. Go check out Witch Bay's News. They had something about that. that was really cool. Each resuscitated individual has gone, undergone an exhaustive range of physical scans and psychological evaluations. Some are being treated for stress-related conditions and mental trauma. Totally understandable. Uh, but otherwise, they appear to be unharmed. Hmm. So did Kane on the Nostromo. Just saying. With no clear evidence, these people have been infected or influenced by the Thargoids in some manner. Aegis has sent a number of proposals to superpowered governments as they consider the next steps. Hmm. So here, here's where we're going to run into... It, here's where the collision comes between the military and the political infrastructure. Because you have kind of Aegis and the other agencies that are working with them to resuscitate these people and, and to, to facilitate a reintegration over time. Now you're going to be faced with the potential of a, a political infight between the Empire, the Alliance, and the Federation, because I guarantee you every single one of them are going to have a different idea of what you should be doing, okay? The Empire may be totally about keeping these people in quarantine for the rest of their lives, or at least until the Thargoid War is over, and the Federation may just want to let them run free. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, I don't expect the militaries to advocate for these people to be released at the moment. Um, not at least until we can be absolutely sure um, that something isn't going on. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to see kind of a collision between, especially now that we have um, a new president in the Federation. So we'll have to see what comes of that. Um, despite the announcement, everyone extracted from a biostorage capsule remains under military quarantine. The Alliance, Empire, Federation, and independent factions have all instructed that any citizen who was abducted by the Thargoids must be kept in high security isolation until further notice. So, you know, I don't see any controversy with this at all. And I don't think that anyone should because... Um, it's not like we just randomly picked these people up and said, hey, you're going to go into quarantine because we think you might have something. Um, they actually had something happen to them. They were captured by aliens, and they were held in alien goo pods, okay? Um, they were connected through basically what, what amounts to biomechanical technology to a hive mind that's growing and continuing to infest the galaxy. We've got these spires and the banshees and the revenants, and we've got all this new technology that's suddenly appearing out of nowhere. These people were interfaced with that technology, and so there is a real cause for concern. However, I don't advocate for quarantine for life. I mean, that's prison, basically. You're, you're damning these people either way. What's the point of rescuing them if eventually you, if you're not going to eventually offer them the freedom back? So, I mean, if, if, let's say this, honestly, and, and I may get, I may get beat up for this, but if it comes down to a decision that these people are never to be released from quarantine, you might as well leave them on the Titans. If they're going to be prisoners in their own homes, let them be Thargoid battle. Let's fight them in space. Let's meet them in space and at least give them an honorable death and not let them rot at home because I think that would be really, really tragic. I think it'd be a tragic move for everybody. 
I don't think that's the case here, but it is a thought that it is completely, it's all for nothing if we don't at least at some point offer these people uh, their freedom back. So let's, uh, let's go on with that one. As discussed by reporter Ernesto Rios for Vox Galactica, there is widespread concern that whatever the Thargoids had planned for their human captives was set in motion before rescue efforts began. While scientific analysis of the captives disputes this notion, as all results have thus far, the returnees uh, may face prejudice and mistrust when they are permitted to rejoin society. Really? That's what you're worried about? You're worried about somebody getting their feelings hurt? Jesus. That's why you're a reporter, Ernesto, and you're not something more important. You know, okay, it's important that they not be judged and they be welcomed back into society, but I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. These were previous Thargoid prisoners who were integrated into Titan technology. We're always going to look at them with suspicion. Maybe a little bit of pity and sorrow. Um, but this, the, uh, this concept, the idea that they're going to be treated fairly and, and perfectly normal the rest of their lives, that's never going to happen no matter how many tests you run on people. How many people out there have been, have been falsely accused of a crime and then all the evidence comes out and the media makes them out to be guilty, but the evidence comes out and says, no, they're not guilty. You take a polygraph test, then they're not guilty. Everything in the world points to them not being guilty, and guess what? There's still people out there that think that people are guilty, and they treat them that way. They look at them that way. It's human nature. I think that deep down we are programmed to be suspicious of each other. It's a survival thing. It really is. It dates back to the caveman days. You know, you want to be suspicious of your neighbor because he might clog you over the head with a stick and steal your wife. Could happen. Or your steak dinner. Or both. I don't know. So, in related news, there are reports that the Thargoid Barnacle Matrix sites have recently undergone enormous growth. That is an understatement. That's the understatement of the year. That the barnacle sites, so the barnacle sites appeared in update 16. They were little, they were kind of cool. They've got some revenants floating around, and um, they were just they were a little different than what we were what we're used to be um, seeing with the giant galaxy map that you can go into. Um, there was nothing really like that. Um, there was some talk at one point that somebody kind of viewed that the barnacle sites might be actually growing. We never really could prove that, but now what we've got is these gigantic spires. And I mean, these things are sticking so far up into the atmosphere. And there was a post recently where it compared the size. These things are bigger than a Coriolis. And they're bigger than the Orbis star, the big Orbis starports, the ones with the, uh, the habitat ring. They're massive. And they're creepy. They're beautiful. It is by far one of the best updates that Elite Dangerous has had in years. Go check it out. Go check out the spires if you haven't, because they are deadly and deadly fun. Um, the sighting of the towering spires and similar megastructures, they really are megastructures. Aegis and other scientific bodies have sent analysis teams to all known sites to gather data. Well, I wish them the best because there are a lot of commanders that are planting their faces in the ground, um, getting smacked around, blown up, and having a good time with it because the spires are... Um, one of the more deadly locations that you can visit with the introduction of the Banshee. Um, and now the Banshee has joined the Revenants at some of the locations that the Thargoids have taken over. So there is just so much going on. And this, you know, this is a lore aspect thing. This is an important part of this, but this is just such a small aspect of what's going on. Now, I want to really kind of hammer home about this particular topic. So um, I hope that these people are okay. I really do. And that's twofold for that. The first one is I'm a human being who cares about other people and I want them to be okay. Um, I realize these are mothers, these are fathers, these are children, these are grandpas, grandmas. These are, these are family people that just were picked up out of their beds and stolen by the Thargoids. And so, you know, they didn't ask for any of this. They really didn't. And, you know, I hope that they're okay as people. Second reason is I hope they're okay because I hope they're not actually Thargoid weapons planted in our midst. I hope that the Thargoids did not simply allow us to go in and capture them 
Um, like it's basically bringing home thousands of neutron bombs. That would be um, absolutely terrifying. And if you don't understand that, um, so I'm, I kind of sh- will share. I, I read a book recently, and, and I'll go ahead and plug it. It's called Alien Horrors. And if you like scary stories and you like aliens, it might be really worth your pickup. But it's a collection of short stories. And one of the short stories is it involves a box that is designed to capture and terminate human beings because the species in the galaxy see humans as flies. One of the traps is a giant table filled with all kinds of good food. All all the, the things that you could ever want in life to eat are there for the picking. There's nothing wrong with eating them. Guy goes up, starts eating them, has no problem. Except when he goes to take a drink. He takes a drink and it turns out that the food was laced with a chemical that is activated when he drinks the wine. Well, there's some horrible things that happen to him afterwards. So, my concern is that there may be a catalyst of some kind. Something we haven't detected. We may not be able to detect if they're loaded with a weapon of some kind, if they're only loaded with half of it. If there's some kind of chemical reaction or something that could be triggered through a common item, you know, say root beer, like something like that, that could cause these things to go off. We'd have thousands of neutron bombs going off in settlements and cities across the bubble. And so it's horrifying to think of. And so for the safety of our families and our friends, our militaries, and just our way of life, it's important to keep these people where they're at so they can continue to be evaluated for their own good, but eventually they've got to be released. You cannot keep these people forever. There's just no way that you can justify that. So, all right. Well, there you have it. Taco Tuesday. It's been two weeks, but we are back on it, and we are back on the grind. Here are the disciples. Without these people, I couldn't do what I do. So if you would like to join the ranks of the disciples, I would love to have you. I do special videos. I do vlogs and a couple of other things that you don't get to see here on the main channel. These people get to see it because you go to patreon.com forward slash commander exorcist. Join up. It's not that expensive, but um, every little bit helps, and I greatly appreciate it. It all goes back to helping to create content on this channel and on my social media around the internet so hey that is taco tuesday thank you guys for being part of the commander exorcist journey and part of this uh, channel and part of the team and for sticking around for taco tuesday i've missed it and it's been really interesting to sit back and watch everybody have fun with update 17 while i was doing other things away from my setup and not able to do anything i just kind of got to watch and get it all spoiled for me but hey that's uh, that's kind of the nature of of what we do But I'm very excited with the update, very excited with where this is going. It's getting scary, and it's getting closer to the ground, if you know what I mean. Just a little bit further, guys. Bring it down to the surface, okay? we got to get Thargoids on the surface. That's what we need. That's what we need. And I think that's really really where we're going, I really hope. I hope. So, um, again, thank you all for watching. Hopefully these people, they get out, and they're not... Neutron bombs waiting on root beer to activate them. But hey, you never know. You never know. But we're going to play it safe. We're going to keep them in quarantine for now. And um, yeah, soon we will find out because you got a new president and a bunch of other stuff happening. And I hear tale that there's update 18 on the way here in a little while. And who knows what's, what's next. So it's a new year, new update coming. Hoping for some good stuff. Hey, everybody. I'm Commander Exorcist. Take care. Fly safe. And I will see you out there. Good night.